Right, let's get down to it then, shall we? So, here we are for another League Racing video, and this one is WOR, World Online Racing, and we are back for the brand new season. And for this one, we are back in Split 1, and I'll show you the grid in a moment. First of all, though, hopefully you're excited for the new season. If you are, leave a like, subscribe for more, and we're going to be trying to bring you, you know, one of these videos a week alongside the PSGL highlights. And basically, we're running, you know, weekly PSGL and WOR in terms of league racing content on the channel. So here is the calendar for this season. We're starting off today, as you saw in the background, at Spa for the Belgium Grand Prix. And the season will end in Brazil. We have a to-be-confirmed round in April. And overall, a pretty decent calendar. I've got my eye on a few tracks, you know, mainly I'd say Saudi Arabia being the key, the key one for me because I really enjoy that track and I actually think it's one of our stronger ones out of the entire calendar. And yeah, it should be a fun season uh, going to Australia, Imola as well, and overall a pretty balanced calendar. Now, as for the driver lineup, we are teammates with the all-star Jake Benham in the Mercedes for this season. So very happy with that one. And uh, that means we're now running the Red Bull in PSGO in Split 2 and the Mercedes in Split 1 WOR on PC. So there is your full grid rundown. Pause the video. Quite a few F1 Esports superstars, you know, Josh Idlewood, Barry Burman, uh, Danny Berezny, Fabrizio Donoso, Shanaka Clay, just big names, you know, Alvaro Caraton as well, Nicholas Longay, big, big names. And it's going to be a really, really good season, I think. So jumping into Q1. Now, WOR, unlike PSGL, this is a full qualifying. So Q1, Q2, Q3, whereas PSGL is just a short quality. And uh, speaking of PSG, if you haven't seen the season opener that I uploaded a couple of days ago around Portugal, then go check that one out. I'll leave it linked up in the top right. But for now, we're on the mediums in Q1, trying to set a decent little bank lap here before we jump onto the softs and out the final corner. Oh, a little bit early in the brakes there. <sighs> right. You can see we do a 42.9. Unfortunately, it was invalid. So the lap isn't going to count, but we do have that delta time reference to aim for on the soft tyres in this lap. Oh, good luck. Cheers. So yeah, at this point, uh, my teammate uh, Jake has retired. He's into Q2 safely and we're now under pressure to try and deliver a lap. So currently P14, plenty of cars behind yet to improve. We haven't technically set a great lap yet, you know, only a 42.9. So we're going to try to improve and see if we can do a better job. So into turn one, nicely done. Didn't quite catch the apex, um, but the exit was pretty decent. And we're going to be north of, let's say, two tenths up as we make our way up through Eau Rouge and Radion. So, so far, not too shabby, not great. You know, I think I've done a bit better in the first sector, but this is Q1, so the grip is a little bit less. Nonetheless, then, making our way into Le Com, we're going to send it here, bring the cover to the left, down to fourth gear, then short shifting back up to fifth, trying to be a little bit safe. I'm a little bit scared about the curves around here. You guys know my track record around this track isn't great. We tend to have a lot of spins. And it's one of my worst tracks in the game alongside USA. So for me, it's all about survival. Through turn nine, getting a bit of oversteer, but managing to have a pretty decent uh, middle sector so far. Into Puon, we're going to hold it in seventh gear and pretty much carry as much speed as possible. Definitely could have maybe gone a bit faster through there, but still nearly eight tenths up now, making our way into the Fania chicane. Important here to take lots of inside curb and no break or throttle whilst on the curbs. Otherwise, you will spin, and I've learned my lesson from that. Into Stavlo. Easy does it through here. We left a little bit of time on the table on the exit, but overall not too bad and pretty much a full second up making our way onto the back straight. So at this point, we only have the bus stop chicane to tackle and we have to make sure we nail this. And if we have a pretty decent final sector, the lap should do the job. So here we go on the brakes, spotting the braking zone just before the curb. Unfortunately, I make a mistake. I just catch the brakes in the rear and get some oversteer and lose time. I've lost the back of that before. Damn it. That mistake cost me, huh? And unfortunately, we are out in Q1. It's disappointing and not really what I had in mind. To be fair, you know, the gap is quite big to P14. For some reason, um, the session bugged out and six cars got eliminated. So technically, Dylan Warren is the last car to get through. And he was only half a tenth ahead of me. So... Um, we could have definitely got into Q2 and P15 without a doubt. I mean, you know, that last bus option chicane, I just made a little mistake. I just, I 
got my foot off the brake as I was releasing it once we got the first initial braking phase out of the way. And then my foot slipped off the pedal and I actually just jabbed the brake again a little bit and it just caused the rears to lock and I had to catch him oversteer. So yeah, unfortunately, just a small mistake costing me about two tenths, I believe, in the end. And um, yeah, it would have been pretty close with uh, someone pairing you in P14 in terms of my lap time. So yeah, disappointing really to be out because the pace was there and actually I felt pretty confident. So we're out in Q1 and we have to fire back from P17 on the grid for the opener in Belgium in WOR. Now we'll quickly go over the strategy. We do have some rain forecast midway through the race. For now though, we're going to start the medium and then switch to the soft tyre. Fuel-wise, we're going to go for about one, uh, about half a lap, sorry, extra fuel, uh, not too heavy. Now, for this race, I was debating if I was going to start on the soft, but I went against my gut feeling and I went for the mediums. I'm going to trust, you know, what the weather forecast is saying. So, here we are. Five lights are on for the first race of the season and we're on the way and it's a good start off the line. We get the jump on Lewis Welch and also Dylan has disconnected so we're going to make two places up straight away into turn one we go making sure to not outbreak ourselves taking it nice and easy on the apex on the corner exit Pedrinho gets a bit of a bit, a bit of traction there we've got Jack West ahead of us uh, Spark TV of course from Xbox who's made the jump to PC and he's got an X next to his name so possible connection issues and the DC we have to watch out for um, in this race with the Ferrari man making our way though down to Le Com. We're going to be a little bit cautious. We'll see if maybe other cars ahead trip up and, you know, give us an opportunity to make a move. And you can see here we've got uh, Yari Fitz, Simon Perini, Jack West, and also Pedreño getting involved. And I'm having a bit of a look here. As we make our way down towards Rivage turn eight, there's contact between Jack West and I've got a car from the left. Jack West gets spun around and then there's desync. What? <sighs> God damn it. How? Such a good fucking start as well. There's no P13 there. Now, unfortunately, Desync plays a part, and Jack West, who got spun out by Ruben Pedreño, um, somehow ended up spinning us out. I don't know how it happened, but you know, it was Desync related, and his car basically was super heavy. I don't know, it was super powerful because it spun me around even when I cleared him. Either way, worth noting, lap four, rain is starting to fall, and Jeffrey Ritchie pits straight away for intermediates, literally immediately for the intermediate tyre. Jeffrey's gone for inters. Now, this does seem a bit too early, but the rain is starting to fall already on lap four. Now, after the spin, we was nearly five seconds off the pack, and we've managed to work to get the gap down to about 2.5, and I'm starting to chip away and gain some time on the pack of cars ahead. So we're running at a good pace, actually. I've got the mediums fired up, and we're looking pretty decent, actually, but the rain is starting to pick up in intensity, and it's at that phase now where we have to consider, do we pit or do we stay out? You're doing well out there, keep it up. We're looking at about 10 more minutes of rain. 10 minutes, dry, seem like the fastest tyre at the moment. 10 more minutes of rain, by the way. Yeah. Now, this is an awkward one because there's only one rain icon, which means it could get wet for inters, or you could see it through on the dries. Will it even be inters? Um... Um... Perini and Carrot on a pit. And they're, they're mediums. They've be going for softs. It's really right, right? Yeah, but hoping for a safe car, maybe. <clears throat> now, Carrot's not for Inters. Now, confirmation, another few cars box for Inters. And again, it's this internal battle. You know, do you pit or do you stay out? I am on the medium, which isn't great. I wish I was on the soft because you'd have more grip. But that's where I trusted the weather forecast and it backfired because the rain arrived earlier than planned. Now we get another car in the pits, Yari Fitz here. As again, we're starting to consider if we're going to pit or not for the Inter. Proving he also went Inters. Yari Fitz is pit. I swear it's nowhere near Inters, right? And like Jake's saying, it's nowhere near Inters, but then suddenly it was about this lap, lap six, it started to really pick up and get worse. And at this point, we had a decision to make in the race. I'm still pulling away from Perini, so. Let's go another one. Gertrude's gamble. I've just been called in for the pits. For the Inters. I'm going to take it. Lewis has stacked it on Pantry. I'm just going to go. Fuck it. Too many people have taken chances and backfired, so I've got a chance here. Let's get back in the race. Yeah, it's on edge up our rouge now. Exit. Classic. Exit now. Leave a disadvantage there. 
you didn't get called in but I did. Yeah, Lewis crashed on pit entries, he's having a front wing change, so I've gained another place. So nice. And I've jumped those who pit through into the zone. Oh, I want absolute urge now. One more stop today, one stop left and in so our strategy. Those who stayed out, so I've got a chance here. Now, there is kind of the update and what's been happening. So, Lewis Welch crashes on pit entry. Not a lot of cars pit. We got called in, you know, for the tire switch by the team. And usually, nine times out of ten, that is the call which you have to trust and box. But now, lap number eight, it's still guys are on drives making them work, including my teammate Jake Benham. And I'm starting to question if this was the right decision. Who's with you? It looks like we'll be running on a dry track soon, back to dry shortly. Now that is not a good message on the radio and it's not really a good sign. There's the other rooms pit, but he's come back out medium. So he's committing to the dry, he's not going for the inter. Yeah. I think I should have just... Ah, oh, fuck. Just committed. There's the other rooms got three seconds though. Now this is not good. Ulas Azulurim has pit for mediums from the soft tyres, so he's not going for the inter and it seems to be faster. Even though the softs are burning up, I think they're still better grip than a medium. And I think I have to agree, at this point I was starting to understand that I made the wrong decision with the tyres. Check your MFD for a new <laughs> strategy option. Been offered to change the drop to the drives. Should have stayed out. Fuck, my gut feeling. I panicked. I really thought it was going to change your instance. The one time I don't do it. Now, unfortunately, this is a bad situation because we started on mediums and if we box for softs now, we might not make it to the end on tire wear. So we have to stay out another lap, even though it's not ideal conditions at this point. Yeah, I'll suffer one more lap just so I can make Pit it. Window open. Let's box this lap. But unfortunately, the circumstances mean we have to take another lap because it will just mean we might just about make it on softs if we box now. At the end of lap 10, here's some of Vigang rejoining on fresh medium and pretty much confirming at this point dry tire is the way to go. So, yeah, we've got this call wrong and it's backfired on us twice in this race so far. This race is so disjointed. Simon's got three seconds as well, by the way. Now, it's a bit of a weird race because the weather forecast, which, you know, the rain was forecast to be right in the middle of the race on icon number four, it arrived on lap four and it's you know, arrived so much earlier, which again, caught me out. My gut feeling I was going to start on okay, soft, but I went out. against it. Is he in traffic? For us, no? Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. Or not really. Kind of. No, he's got a couple of cars, I think. And now we are going to pit for a set of softs, and we're going to have to try and make them last to the end of the race. Stack your neck, three seconds. Two, two penalties starting to stack up. If I can just close the gap a bit. Go, go now. Danny, Danny, Danny's not in traffic, but he's got two cars ahead of him that he will catch. Now, we're going to rejoin on the softs. And uh, like I said, we got the, you know, the weather forecast at the start. We've got that wrong. My gut feeling, I went against it and it backfired. And also, I went against my gut feeling for the Inters. I would have stayed out, but when I got that first message to switch for Inter, I trusted the team and it backfired twice. So we've taken two L's so far this race as we rejoined behind Yari Fitz. He currently has a time penalty. We don't have any so far. We don't even have a warning yet, I don't think. So... We're looking pretty good in that regard, and so far, in terms of my racing at Belgium, it's one of my stronger weekends because I've not had a spin yet, which is quite rare for me. So, we get past Yori, and it's that phase of the race where we have to work together now because we have to try and catch up to those on medium. So, yeah, you're going to see over the next few laps a few relays as we kind of swap around and try to make ground and also, you know, effectively uh, lose no time battling in World War Combat, as you'll see here. Yori goes by again. And uh, we're going to try and close the gap to the medium runners and see if we can, you know, get near the points. Possibly get in the top 10. I mean, we don't have a penalty, so that could be our golden ticket in this race. So even if we're like P11, P12, the fact we don't have a free second could mean we get into the points in this race. So we're going to keep pushing and seeing what we can do. So uh, if you look at the minimap, you can see right now on the Camel Strait, we've got a few cars on there. And then there's quite a gap to the cars further ahead. Meanwhile, Gary Fitz is light flashing, which means he's out of battery as we make the move once again. And uh, we have a bit of a moment there through Le Com as we struggle with the curbs. And we're going to make sure we stay ahead now because I want to have first crack at these guys in the medium tyre. So ahead of us, we've got Primoz Miklovcic and also Sam McBride as we set a new fastest lap, taking it away from Yari Fitz, who had it previously. So again, both of us working very well together and running at a pretty strong pace as we close up to now Sam McBride and uh, Primoz making the move and pulling away. 
Sam has a three second time penalty now, so we're going to try and make the pass on the Red Bull man as we set up the overtake for the Camel straight. So here we go through the final bus stop, making sure we stay nice and close through this sequence onto turn one. We're going to box this lap, push hard on the in lap. What is he doing, man? I'm sorry, but I know I'm sat behind him, but you don't just break on a straight and then let me pass. Now, Jack was having a few issues with Danny Berezny in the lead battle in the other car. Meanwhile, we're going to try and go for the move on Sam here. What even was that? Just literally went down to half race speed on the apex. Now, surprisingly, Sam has very strong straight line speed. I'm not even making a scratch, even though he doesn't have the RS and I'm using all my battery. How much battery has this guy got? Sam that rides one in very low wings, he just it's a rocket ship on the stroke, can't get past. Oh wow, wait a minute. Oh yes. There's been an incident on Ooh. track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Fucking just go. Be careful. I'm thinking softs. I'm thinking softs. Now this is it. Crucial moment. Safety car and we get a chance to get off these tires and get back on strategy. If I get a good restart, I am absolutely bolting it. Oh, I've gone past the safety car. Let's not do that. <laughs> oh my god. I've been... What? Oh no. What is this game? I've been disqualified. Go, go, go. What is this game, man? Swat out your game. How did you pass the safety car? I passed it for like two seconds and then got disqualified. Oh, for fuck's sake. Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. Honestly, this man, I game. can't be asked this game. It's... Jeez. Wow. <laughs> that is insane. I've never seen that before. God, man. Now then, a lot has happened in the last 30 seconds, but we've got ourselves back on strategy. We don't have a penalty, but Jake Benner, my teammate, has been disqualified from the race lead. So all of a sudden, oh, we're looking at no points this race unless we pull something out of the bag. Now, Stachylek pits under safety car, which moves us up to P11 without a penalty. So right now, we are on for points if we can finish where we are on track. Penalty and two warnings for Simon Prigny. Louis, penalty and three warnings, but that'll be two, one for collision. Jeffrey Ritchie, one warning. Alvaro, two. Maybe one for collision. And Dylan Warren's like not in the race. Piotr, penalty and one warning. Okay, and let's get it. ready to go racing so again. Maybe the like safety car seven. is in this lap. When the field accelerates, remember there is no overtaking until the green flag. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. warnings. In this lap. Here there. Maybe some warnings. Josh has got a five-second penalty for collision. Up it's in P3. Yeah, I mean, but oh my, about seven cars just. Oh my god, about seven here? cars has just got. What is Bresne doing? Are about we really doing this? four cars just got penalties. Chinaka, Luke Smith, both got five. I'm just keeping the distance. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll let you know. Good luck. Now then, we've had a bit of a rundown on the penalties, and right now we're looking at about P7, possibly as high as P4, but usually penalties that, you know, get taken on the safety car for contact uh, usually get removed. So. Back on the way, uh, Danny Brezny has caused a bit of a, a slow restart here, which is totally fair, but it's caused a bit of chaos. Luckily, we managed to avoid it. And uh, back on the way then, Jerry Fitz behind 11 seconds ahead of us, Sam McBride, three seconds. So we're looking pretty decent right now, and we're looking good for some points. Four full racing laps to go. Let's give everything, and let's see what we can do up a rouge. Now we're going to see some penalties as people go flat out. Now here we go, through a rouge and Radion. Uh, we know Sam's got very, oh, no, big, very good straight line speed. Look at Yari Fitz as well in the Williams. Very strong straight line speed here. We're trying to stay ahead. I'm using all my battery, but we just don't have the straight line speed with the wings that we're running. And uh, Yari's going to get the inside line. I need some space on the right. Through the left, we struggle with oversteer. Yari, though, goes the long way around and makes the move. And we have to accept defeat and slot in behind. I tried to fight back into turn eight as Yulas uh, goes off the track. We have a moment. Yulas damage. Gosh. Got no straight line speed, man. Yari just ate me up on that straight. Jesus. This is going to get so ugly, man. I really don't want to get involved. I'll, I kind of want to just get a move on, but... Everyone just being so aggressive. Yeah. So... Simon, 1.5 behind. 20 ERS. 
No, move on to lap 21, and it's all kicking off here in the battle for the tail end of the points in this race. You've got the most up, everyone ahead. Yep, trying to hold on to that. Yari, 14%. Yeah, I'd say if you just try, use a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's just this fucking roadblock ain't helping. And I can't even see the track when I get too close. Now, it's all kicking off. Uh, Jake, at this point, has turned into my race engineer because he's no longer racing. And uh, we have much more and much better ERS levels than everybody else. And we're going to get the chance to use those over the next lap and a quarter. So, best believe, I've been waiting for a moment. I'm tactically just, you know, waiting for the chance. And there's one battery left. That's my time to try. And you can hear me now. Now it's time to go. It's not ideal that both of these guys who are battling have penalties because we're losing out. Okay, on potential cars ever. Here we go then. Having a look at Yari into Blanche when I thought about it, but I backed off at the end. We're going to go again though with the battery and the ERS and fight back again into the bus stop to the outside on the brakes. We got the long way round and we managed to get the move done there. A bit of a correction on the wheel to not squeeze Yari into the apex too much, but job done and up into the points. Now though, last half of the race, DRS is enabled and we can give it everything we've got. At this point, I know Sam. Unlike the last time I tried to overtake him, he's got no ERS left. So we've got a massive, massive ace up our sleeve this time around, especially with DRS as well. It should be a bit more competitive. You can see here this time I'm using my battery a lot earlier to try and close the gap. Sam this time actually has DRS, but he's got no battery left. And you can see how more powerful the ERS is as we breeze past on the camel straight. I then went on to push like crazy after the three cars ahead of us on track. Present moment in time you're gonna get p3 <laughs> now there you go there's the update with the penalties last half of the race though luke smith will probably get his penalty removed so i'd like to pass him on track if i can but we're just a bit too far back i gained so much on this last lap to the point where we even actually set the fastest lap of the race on the last half of the race here as we finish oh, in p7 i thought I'm, i thought about sending it on luke there but i'll take a fastest nah. lap though. yeah oh nice yeah. Now, at the end of the race, you can see we finished P4 in the session with the fastest lap. Didn't quite get P3 with Pedrinho's penalty. We finished about half a second away. Bit of a shame, though, as uh, a lot of those five-second penalties will get removed after the uh, stewards review. So I believe Shanaka Clay, um, also, I want to say, Luke Smith as well, those two at least, and Josh Idaru in P5 as well. So I think they're all going to get their penalties removed under safety car because those are usually BS penalties. So... The final results look like this. You can see Danny Bresne picked up the win. Sam Corby, my teammate in PSGL, finishing in P2 ahead of Josh Idaru. Shedeka Clay, P4 ahead of Pedreño. Luke Smith, P6. And we finish in P7 ahead of Alvaro Caraton, Primoz Miklavcic, and Sam McBride. So we finish P7 with a fastest lap. And this is also this is, uh, the, the championship standings, basically. So, yeah, right now, it's a decent start to the season. We've got some good points. Considering we started from P17, we got the original tyre choice wrong based off the weather forecast and we also got the switch to Inters wrong as well. We had a pretty decent race and also not even a single warning. So very happy with that one and overall I've got to say very satisfied with my driving considering if you guys know around Spa I usually struggle. Nonetheless though, hopefully you enjoyed that one. Leave a like and subscribe if you did for weekly F1 league racing content. As always, check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them. And thank you, as always, to the members of the channel for supporting the content. But that is it from me here today, and I'll see all of you in the next one. Until then, take care, and let's go back from me.